So, Darren, it's uh, more than a, just a game, isn't it, this Saturday for Yeovil Town? No, absolutely. It's been it's more it's been more than just a, a last week, if you like. Um, we've obviously the work we're doing off the field and the you know the kind of the responsibilities that come with trying to make that uh, successful. Um, it's been uh, it's been a busy week and uh, there's been a lot of press and media and um, you know we want to do something absolutely magnificent for for these girls and. Um, I'll be pushing as hard as I uh, can to to make that a reality for them. But um, yeah, it's been yeah, it's been a different. It doesn't feel like we're just kind of winding down. It doesn't feel like that at all. No, it's uh, nice to see that fundraiser in place, isn't it? As well. No, that's, that's that's everything. You know, that's everything now. And for the next month, we need to we need to push that, and we need to push it for the you know for the right reason. We're not we're not saying. Um, you know, we don't want people to think it's just for for Lee's family. We want to push, you know, the the boat out for the Young Minds charity. Something we we feel is really relevant because um, mental health for me needs um, needs a lot more uh, thought into prevention rather than cure. And and obviously, if we can affect our young people out there in in society, then the likelihood is the future will will be a better place for, for them and for, for everyone. So I think it's a really um, appropriate cause to donate to. It's something we, uh, we, we felt strongly about at the club. Um, something I know uh, Rachel and, and the family felt very um, strongly about. And uh, no, it's, it's, it's apt that we've done it that way. But Lee gave so much to so many people. You know, in my eyes, it's our, my responsibility now to try and help give something back when he needs us. Yeah, and it just seems fitting, doesn't it? The fixture has been in the in the fixture list, of course, for, for a long, long time, but it's just fitting that this final game is a home game and, and you're able to do it in the final game of the season. No, absolutely, and something that the you know uh, Lee's girls are really excited about. They're excited on coming on the pitch and being a mascot, and Rachel and I have spoken regularly this week on who they want to walk out with and things like that. You know, it is... You know, we want to roll out the red carpet for them because they're special, special people, and they've shown such strength and character, and you know, um, resolve as a family that you know we want to we want to show we want to show the family how much Lee meant to us, and we want to show the family how much they mean to us, um, and uh, and this is the best way we know how in in this moment, and it's just great that, that obviously we've got fans back in to share it with them. Yeah, and what role will those fans play on Saturday? Well, I've only enjoyed one game this year, and, and that was Maiden Ed um, last Tuesday. Uh, it is, I, I can't tell you, it's a different sport. It's a different sport without them. I mean, I haven't had them back, and we didn't even, you know, we didn't even win the game. But just everything around it, you know, it's just it's just a completely different sport. Um, and I know our home form's been pretty good in 2021, but I can see why it took us so long to get going. Um, at the start of the season at home because uh, I can't, it's, it's ridiculous how different it is. It's so, so ridiculous. Um, so having them back would be great. I love the atmosphere. I've said it many a time. There's a, there's a very nice man who sits behind me. I end up talking to him. I, you know, I've missed him. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to have him back. And, and uh, when I came out, I didn't, I didn't really consider the reception, but the reception that the players got and and I can speak personally, the reception I got when I when I walked down the tunnel was something that will stay with me for the rest of my career. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I must ask about Josh. Is there an update after his uh, horrible injury on Saturday? Josh is in, he, he, Josh is in surgery today. Um, um, he's, he's, he's got a, a tough road back. Um, he's got a long road back. Um, it's probably the worst, in terms of time off, it's probably the worst injury a footballer now gets. Um, or can now potentially get, and um, so he's got a long road back. But he has our full support, our full full support. And um, you know, if he's, we've already told him if if it's possible in his first game back when he's fit, can be at Yeovil, we'll 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 welcome him with open arms. But he's been magnificent for us. I mean, for someone that came, and I've got to tell you, it was a bit of a flip of the coin in terms of him coming and would he play and wouldn't he, and the impact he made from day one, incredible. Incredible, really, really uh, brilliant performance from him, and 
I like those lone players who really kind of take the football club into their heart. It, it almost becomes their parent club. Ramal Hutton had that. Michael Kelly has that. You know, they they, they really sort of uh, embrace, you know, they, they don't, because when you loan a player, basically you're renting them, you know, you're leasing them off off, a, off another organisation. But, they, they, you know, Josh has never behaved like that. Josh has always behaved like he's he's one of us. So I'd love him to play for Yeovil again. I've, I really enjoyed it. We've helped his career enormously. There's no doubt about that. And he's helped us, you know, to come out of a, a bad start and, and, um, and get a few wins. But, no, it's, he's been great for us. Yeah, and, and you tell us the players always want to play... Uh, even though they're not fully fit. So I guess final game of the season, uh, those injured players, they'll want to be playing and be part of the, the team and involved us in some capacity this weekend. Yeah, no, the, the only difficult thing at the minute is training. You know, it's only it's trying to get people out to train and prepare. Um, I think we had a, I think we had a five aside today. You know, it was so many players we had. But we want to we want to make sure that those that are playing, you know, really threadbare in terms of their f physical condition, are able to get out of there Saturday. And um, we all know it will be Carl's last game. Um, I can confirm that Jimmy Smith is going to retire from full time football at the end of the season. Um, so it'll be his last, you know, exposure at, um, at Hewish Park as well. So yeah, it will be um, it will be a, a, an emotional day, very emotional. Yeah, and Stockport will be uh, playing the role of spoilers, but they need the points themselves, don't they? So, what sort of a game are you expecting from them? Well, I've been in this position. I've been in the position where I've needed to win in the last game to to ensure my, a playoff place. It's quite a tough position to be in, and um, there's a lot of pressure on it. That's for sure. Um, and um, of course, the only pressure with us is our pride. And I've I've tried to highlight that to the players this week that. This is about pride. It's not, you know, it's not about seeing it out and all of that mumbo jumbo. It's about playing properly and, and being really professional. And what they have done is they've given absolutely everything um, since we since we lost Lee. And uh, I want to make sure we go out as strong as possible. You know, I know there's a lot of critique out there um, around our performance this year, which is quite right, but. You know, I'll never have another year in my life like this again, that's for sure. No. And we can't talk about Stockport without mentioning Paddy Madden, given his connections to Yeovil, of course. I mean, how good a, a striker is he at this level? How good a striker is he in League One? You know, he's a, he's a very good player. Um, he's a very good player and, you know, the, he's been very... Um, I don't really know the right words for this bit, but I'm sure he cost a few quid to get from League One to, to the <laughs> National League. But been a brilliant servant for Yeovil, you know, no doubt about that. It's been an absolutely terrific servant and uh, had such a great period here. Um, and, um, you know, he'll be welcomed with open arms. He's, he's one of those players that the fans had a, a real connection with, a real honesty about them uh, in terms of their, their connection with him. and. You know, it'll be, it'll be nice to see him. I've, I've spoke to Paddy on a few occasions, um, but never met him in person. So it'll be nice to meet him. But uh, no, he's been a, a really, really good player for this football club, and we should always remember our really good ex-players you know, like Terry and players like that, Lee Johnsons, etc. So it's um, you know it's something that we should we should hold dear to our heart, the history and tradition of the football club. Yeah. Well, good luck for Saturday, Darren. And thanks for all the time you've given us throughout a, a difficult season. Appreciate it all. No, thank you very much. Thank you uh, to you as well. Thanks, Darren. Oh, well, it's my turn, Darren. OK, um, Ed. Good to see the, the mainstream press are getting on board with your uh, charitable uh, adventure sort of thing. Um, big article in the Daily Mail today about it, so that, that's good to see that they're supporting it. Absolutely, yeah. No, I think I think it's a very um, it's a very uh, fashionable topic, isn't it? Mental health, one uh, first thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's like mental health, like any illness. I I think I think we I don't think we ever expect it to happen to us, and then when it does, we we get, we have this experience of it in a in a completely different way, and um, that experience teaches you how to respect the work that goes on you know and the treatment that that is being developed and the treatment that can be applied right now and i've been really open i've i've seen a psychologist for the last um well since lee passed and um 
I'd never seen one before, spoke to one b before, and uh, yeah, Dr. Alan Johnston from the LMA is, um, has been uh, has been wonderful for me. So, and again, you never think you're going to need it. You don't. That's never going to happen to me. But when it does happen, you realise the there's some real quality of people out there that are, that are very very intelligent and can uh, and can help. Um, Carl Dickerson, you mentioned last game for the club, going on to be a manager. He's been a ter terrific servant for you, all, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, he's magnificent. He's someone that I'll never f fall out of touch with. Um, he's a he's a brilliant guy, brilliant guy, top player. His career speaks for itself, and you know from the way him and Lee led m my first two years in the changing room, they've been. They've been incredible. He's been incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, and uh, we've had many a conversation lately on, on his new job and how difficult it's going to be and how old he's going to look in the next six months. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we'll, always, we'll always stay in touch. Carl, Carl and I, we have a very close relationship. I try and have good, you know, really close relationships with my captains because they must embody the, you know, the manager. But... Um, yeah, he's been fantastic. I, you know, honestly, I thank him from the bottom of my heart. But um, he'll want to go out on a win. You know, Carl for everything is a a born winner, and the only blip on his oval time would have been the period that he couldn't. You know, sorry, he wasn't allowed to help try and keep us up. Um, you know, that was that was a big shame, and that's something that's still obviously uh, great with him um, because he was ready to come back and give his all the following year in the league lower. You know, and that was. Mm. That was wonderful and uh, typifies the man. Absolutely. So, what 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 next for you, Darren? In the context that uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're you're not going to well, you're going to have some holiday. I hope do you good to have some holiday. But but at the same time, I presume you've got a fair bit of work to do now to get the team back up to scratch again for uh, for next season. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 That. Um, yeah. Look, I'm I'm going to have a break. I need to have a rest. Um, definitely. I I think you can probably. Both you've both been doing this now with me for two years, and you know I am I am warm within an inch of my life at the moment. Um, and uh, you know after this weekend, I'm going to have a I'm going to have a little break before I uh, come back into the ground and work. It's been like I said, it's been the it, it, it easily the worst year of my life um, with everything wrapped in. It's been tough. And I know people are critical of me, and I know they're critical of the team's performances, and I understand that. I get that, but I've got to tell you, it's been one thing after another, and um, it's been a real tough one. And 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 some of my proudest moments have been you know, this year through some of the toughest times, you know. Um, and it's taken you know some real some real guts from everyone to to get back out there. I mean, after Lee died, if if we'd have just said no, we're not playing. We can't play. We don't feel right to play. I don't think anyone would have batted an eyelid, um, and they would have supported us. And and um, when we've come into for criticism, and I think it's really harsh the criticism. You know, we've all seen what Liverpool have done without their central defenders, or what they've not done with their central without their central defenders. You, you put three COVID periods in, ten day isolation periods. The turnover of players because of injury. I mean, it's just been incredible. And uh, I actually, someone sent me a post from Lawson Diath. I think Lawson Diath posted something on Twitter last week. I thought it was magnificent. So strong, so, you know, up front and ballsy. I loved it, absolutely loved it. And I don't go on social media, but probably a good job because it probably be absolutely slaughtering me from pillar to post. But um, I thought it was a really, really charismatic... Um, advert for Lawson's character and the team's temperament. Um, I was actually very proud of him when he did that. A previous manager always used to say to me whenever he was talking about getting players in, it was like a spinning place that you had up in the air, you know, half of them up in the air and half of them not. I presume though, although you don't have a break, that you have got a few spinning plates, have you? Yeah, I, th I think a break, I think a break for, for football managers is not having the games, you know, it's not having the, the kind of the topsy-turvy feel of if you win or you lose, you, you can kind of you, you rest a little, you get a little bit more time to look after yourself in terms you know, fitness and, and uh, quality of life. Um, 
but the phone is non-stop. But I don't mind that part. That, that part to me is not work. That's just talking. Talking is talking, isn't it? So whether you're, whether you're doing it you know, personally or professionally, it's just talking to people. So, no, I am, uh, you know, I got taught by some very, very good people in terms of recruitment of um, and spinning plates. And um, there are hundreds of plates spinning right now. Uh, and you just hope you can catch them before they drop. And two years ago when I started building this squad, I was able to catch so many great plates before they fell and smashed. And, you know, we developed a really great squad. And it's, you know, it's obvious to say this year our recruitment hasn't been as good. So, um, you know, we've got to try and make sure that we make some good decisions. Squad's going to get smaller. You know, finances, are, it never, it's not getting easier. It's not getting better. We've got to make sure we spend every penny, every penny wisely. We can't ever forecast for injuries. We can't ever forecast for that because how can you? you know, Josh Staunton played 36 games in a row for Halifax. He played six for us. Mm. You know, we had Wilkinson, Staunton and Collins for 28 games out of a possible 120. How yeah, you, sums you, it up, doesn't it? How you, how you sums spoke, it up. How you spoke, and <laughs> Staunton, Staunton was supposed to be the one that filled in for Wilkinson, Collins and Charlie Lee when they weren't fit. And, <laughs> yeah. and he was the first one to go. So, uh, yeah, it's, look, I, I, I don't want to overthink this year. I've not enjoyed it. I don't think anyone would have. I've had, I've had some things in my life that will stay with me forever. Not good things. Um... And, and the only sort of ray of sunshine looking back is last Tuesday against Maidenhead. That's the only game I've I've enjoyed all season. Well, you've had, a, had an addition to the family. You mustn't forget that one. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's no bundle of joy. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Finally, have you got any have you got any friendlies to line up? And talk to us about for next season yet? Yeah? yeah, we've got some. Um, uh, we're going to play Forest Green here, I think, late July. Um, we're going to play, I think we're playing Southampton, and I th we're, we're playing Southampton's 23s here a couple of weeks before the season. We've got the normal ones, you know, I, I, I think we're going back to Western Supermare um, and uh, Taunton. I, I really, I think the Taunton game's a really good game for us because they, I like how they throw the kitchen sink at us. I like that. Um, Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll go back to there. Um, they've been really good in the past, those games. Um, our pitch is having quite a lot of work done to it this year. So we've had to obviously have a decent period where we can we can refurb the pitch, um, which starts, I think, Tuesday. I think the refurb of the pitch starts Tuesday. So that you know that gives us a little bit of time to to uh, to get that up and running and start the you know a new pitch. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's more in there. Obviously, I don't know if all of them have been confirmed yet. Those ones that I've said have definitely been confirmed. Um, and I, th I, th I think we've got six or seven. I think they're in the diary. Six hey. or seven. Well, I hope it's a, I hope it's a, a good day tomorrow, as, as well as being an emotional and a touching day. Yeah. And uh, I'd just like to echo what Dan said. Really, thanks for making yourself so available to us when we needed you. Yeah, and it's time for we have a. Uh, a much better season next season. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers, Abe. Uh, You're a good man. Thanks, Dan. Hi, Darren. How are Hi. you? Yeah, not bad, mate. You? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so, we mentioned obviously Carl's last game and Jim retiring. Just how difficult is it going to be to replace the senior players we're losing um, mm. at the end of the season? Impossible. Impossible. Impossible to replace Carl Dickinson, first and foremost. But just the winner in him. The, f the position he plays I mean everyone tells me he can't run and he can't do this and he can't do that and he's old and plays so many games so many games hardly ever gets done like really done 1v1 where you think to yourself cool he's getting absolutely roasted here well, one in five maybe you know someone gives him a bit of a a, a lesson in athleticism <laughs> but um absolutely brilliant character and Jimmy the same Jimmy come Jimmy came to us a really great you know in a in a winning period which always helps and and then help kick us on again but Jimmy to me this year you know because of his injuries Jimmy's contribution off the pitch this year has been um absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic 
he's you know he's going to go into a full time coaching environment now, and he's going to be a fabulous coach, a really fabulous coach. Just needs to take his time and and develop his practices and and everything he wants to be known as as a coach, and um, and go from there. But um, fantastic human being, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and um, someone again like Carl who wanted to be here. It's very hard for people to to try and attract people who want to be here because we're not making anyone a millionaire. We're, we're either, you know, you, you look at the kind of the nature of the squad, we're either at, on the back nine um, for some people or we, or they're just starting out, you know. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a very fine balance, but brilliant, brilliant people, great pros, brilliant pros. And, um, you know, they'll be sorely missed, sorely missed. And uh, just touch on the mental health, the players were wearing shirts for Andy's Man Club at the weekend. Um, how did that come about? And is that just going to be the start of the club's kind of touch towards in, in the mental health kind of situation? Well, that, that was from Alteringham. Alteringham suggested it and we were happy to, to support and promote from their end. And they wanted to do it, obviously, in line with what's happened with Lee. Um, and we were happy to support the, uh, the cause. Um, and Altrincham were very good. They've been very good from since day one. You know, that, that was the first game we called off the Altrincham game um, after Lee died, and um, uh, and 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 they were excellent. Really, really professional when we went up there last week. You know, it was a, a, a probably an unbelievable game for the neutrals. And when we were three two up, I thought if we win this, I think it'll be my favourite win in twenty years because. <laughs> We were we were dead on our feet at half time. Charlie Lee had so much ice on his body; he looked like, <laughs> he looked like he'd just walked out of Alaska. It was un, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. It was packs of ice everywhere, just all over him. Um, but no, look, we we couldn't hold on. That defending in the end was was poor. But you know, it's I, I, the best way of explaining. Especially the last sort of six or seven weeks is, I feel like we're a, you know a certain make of car. We're a Mercedes, but we've got a Ford's engine, <laughs> Vauxhall wheels, <laughs> a Renault a Renault's boot. <laughs> we're kind of just made up of all the <laughs> bits that don't really fit <laughs> in those places. But um, but no, they they you know, again Charlie and Dicko could hardly walk by the end of it. Uh, Lawson shouldn't have played. There's so many. Uh, yeah. I worked it out really. It, it was like seven v ten really. It was, um, but they're incredible attitudes, and you know, it just shows the pride they've got for their for them for themselves and for their football club. So you know, but uh, uh, I absolutely uh, commend them on their on their desire to play. Thanks, Aaron. All the best for Saturday, and again, thank you for your time and enjoy your break. Cheers, Paul. Thanks, everyone.